EU envoy blasts Israel over deadly Jenin raid. A European envoy criticized Israel for the proportionality of its use of force during the deadly raid in Jenin refugee camp. The envoy's comments align with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who also condemned the excessive force used by Israeli forces. A delegation of UN officials and diplomats from 25 countries, led by the European Union representative to the Palestinian territories, visited the camp and expressed concern about the weaponry deployed during the operation. The delegation called for an end to the cycle of violence and emphasized the need for a political solution to the conflict. The raid caused significant damage to the camp's infrastructure, including water and sewage pipes, houses, and schools. UN officials appealed for funds to support the rebuilding efforts in the camp, as the current appeal is underfunded. Algeria pledged $30 million, and the United Arab Emirates committed to providing $15 million for the reconstruction of Jenin. Poland moves troops to eastern border amid Wagner fears. Poland has begun deploying over 1,000 troops to its eastern border amid concerns of increased tension caused by the presence of Wagner Group fighters in Belarus. The move is a demonstration of Poland's readiness to respond to any attempts at destabilization near its border. Last week, Poland announced the deployment of 500 police officers to enhance border security. The country has witnessed a rise in the number of migrants attempting to cross the Belarus border, with over 200 people making illegal attempts on Friday. Poland has accused Belarus of orchestrating a migrant crisis by bringing in individuals from the Middle East and Africa and attempting to push them across the border. A senior Wagner commander confirmed that the mercenaries from the group were preparing to move to Belarus. Portugal State Support for Ukraine's NATO Membership Portugal expressed its support for Ukraine's NATO membership in a joint statement with Kiev. The statement highlighted Portugal's commitment to backing Ukraine's path towards NATO membership when the appropriate conditions are met. Portugal has previously provided military equipment to Ukraine, including tanks. Both countries aim to address the issue of membership and military support for Ukraine at the upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius. President Zelensky discussed peace formula proposals and Ukraine's future EU membership with Portugal's Prime Minister Costa during a phone call. Zelensky expressed his hopes to begin discussions on Ukraine's EU membership by the end of the year. Russian Defense Minister Shoigu shown inspecting troops. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu inspected troops and observed the training of newly formed units comprising contracted servicemen, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense. The ministry released video footage showing Shoigu in military fatigues inspecting soldiers at a shooting range. The exact date of the inspection was not provided. Shoigu stated earlier that the recent mutiny by the Wagner mercenary group did not impact Russia's military operation in Ukraine. The crisis was resolved when Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko mediated a deal between the Kremlin and Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin. The defense ministry stated that Shoigu personally assessed the training of contract servicemen in various combat scenarios, including urban warfare. Top Turkish officials to discuss economic cooperation in Qatar ahead of Erdogan visit. Turkey's Vice President Sevdet Yilmaz and Finance Minister Mehmet Shimshek are set to visit Qatar to discuss economic cooperation opportunities and strengthen relations. They will meet with Qatar's Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani in delegations to explore economic ties. This visit comes ahead of President Tayyip Erdogan's upcoming trip to the Gulf region. Turkey expects direct investments of around $10 billion initially, and a total of $30 billion, in sectors such as energy, infrastructure, and defense from Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates following Erdogan's visit. Investments and funding from the Gulf have helped alleviate pressure on Turkey's economy and currency buffer since the country initiated efforts to repair ties with Saudi Arabia and the UAE in 2021. NATO pledges to spend at least 2% of GDP on defense. NATO allies have reached an agreement to commit to spending at least 2% of their GDP on defense, solidifying the alliance's previous goal. The commitment is set to be signed off by NATO leaders at their upcoming summit in Vilnius. The allies recognize the need for increased defense spending, and the new pledge aims to emphasize this. Additionally, NATO leaders are expected to agree on long-term support for Ukraine, including efforts to strengthen political ties and potentially fast-track membership in the future. While some countries have already met the 2% target, others are still working towards compliance. The new guideline does not have a specific timeline but is intended to be enduring. 
Yemen's Houthi authorities banned Swedish imports over Quran burning. The Houthi movement in Yemen has imposed a ban on Swedish imports in response to the burning of the Quran in Stockholm. The Houthiran al masira TV reported that the decision is a symbolic gesture to protest the violation and desecration of the holiest Muslim book. The Houthi trade minister called on other Islamic countries to follow suit. The burning of the Quran outside Stockholm Central Mosque caused outrage in Islamic nations, prompting several countries to summon Swedish envoys. While Sweden cited freedom of speech rules for not banning the demonstration, the government is considering making such actions illegal due to concerns about national security. The Houthi movement, which ousted the Saudi-backed government from Sana'a in 2014, holds de facto control in northern Yemen. 7 Killed in Indian Village Election Clashes At least 7 people were killed and dozens injured in clashes related to local elections in the state of West Bengal, India. The violence occurred during a contest to elect municipal leaders, as the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, seeks to gain a foothold in the historically communist-ruled state. The clashes involved rival party workers wielding batons, ballot boxes being snatched and set on fire, and the seizure of crude bombs. The state has a long history of political violence during elections, with thousands of murders recorded since the 1960s. The state's ruling Trinamool Congress Party BJP, and Communist Party of India, Marxist, were among the parties involved in the violence. Kremlin expands surveillance on Russians' music and taxi journey. The Kremlin is increasing state surveillance in Russia, including restricting music playlists and tracking taxi journeys in real time. Yandex Music, Russia's popular music streaming service, plans to block dangerous content, leading to concerns about censorship. Yandex, often referred to as the Russian Google, is seen as a tool for spreading propaganda and spying on Russians. The new restrictions on music choices are claimed to protect listeners from offensive songs but are seen by critics as an attempt to further control artistic expression. The Russian government has also granted the FSB, Federal Security Service, the authority to monitor people's movements on taxi platforms, raising concerns about privacy and surveillance. Foreigners entering Russia are reportedly subjected to intensified surveillance by the FSB. Low-key Trump bets on Vegas volunteers with promise of more to come. Donald Trump made his debut in Las Vegas, Nevada, with a less flashy appearance than usual. Speaking at a volunteer recruitment drive, he emphasized the importance of the upcoming election in his belief that Nevada is a Republican state, despite losing it in consecutive presidential campaigns. Trump repeated false claims about the 2020 election and touched on various topics like the border, China, and critical race theory. He also took jabs at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, criticizing his personality and past voting record on nuclear waste storage. While polling in the state is limited, early polls show Trump leading other GOP contenders by a significant margin. Trump hinted at more rallies in the future with large crowds.